busted. Hello out there and thanks for joining us uh, as always on Political Platform. Uh, from the weekend, we have a lot of reports for you and uh, we'll be doing analysis on those reports and uh, we take your mails through politicalplatform at yahoo.com. You can share your views with us and uh, we, have in we have some mails that we are indeed going to be sharing this morning uh, with you out there. Uh, we want to thank you for always uh, uh, tuning in at this time. Uh, the presidency is fighting back, fought back very fiercely at the weekend over allegations of nepotism against the acting president, Yemi Oshibaji. Of course, when you take a look at uh, uh, the initial reports that came out and then the, the uh, rebuta and the facts and figures about the office of the acting uh, president, and uh, those who are the who, who, how they are populated by different staff and those who came in from different parts of Nigeria, you you can also find out uh, your opinion on what it is. And then the SSA uh, uh, to the acting uh, president on legal matters, uh, Bill Kisusedu, is the one that issued the statement yesterday. Now we also will be telling you uh, through Oji Uzo Kalu, uh, who has said he visited uh, the president in London, that the president is doing well. And uh, there are even dates now are fixed by some of them that he is uh, get, he will get getting set to come back to Nigeria. The NJC, the Nigeria, National Judicial Council, uh, also at the weekend reinstated six suspended judges uh, so far, uh, counting on eight months after uh, they, after allegations were raised against them. Uh, the NJC probably acted because. Uh, there were no cases filed against some of them, and those who went uh, to true trial, somebody like Aden Mola Adeni, uh, was discharged and acquitted, and they asked to go back uh, to resume uh, their their work. Now we'll be talking about uh, this as well. We'll be giving you the names of the judges who are back to work, and uh, uh, we'll also be telling you those other judges who are under trial who have uh, not been, who are not back to work. And the Federal Road Safety uh, Commission has moved senior staff around and uh, who always want to pick up those uh, who are working assiduously to get the information about road safety uh, to uh, the people. Our friend, uh, Jonas Agu, he was uh, the assistant call marshal in the uh, Port Harcourt Zone. He's been moved to Joss. And our friend, B.C. Kazim, who is uh, uh, before now in the media and strategy, uh, is uh, now the in the public education uh, substantive uh, uh, spokesperson for a uh, substantive spokesperson for the federal uh, road safety uh, commission we have uh, the kogi west the war the war in kogi west uh, that war you see it everywhere uh, when you say kogi west it reverberates to lokoja where the governor is under pressure from everywhere and uh, dino mela is at the center of it a recall group is uh, beating the drums that they want him back. They claim that he has no constituency project and uh, constituency office in any of uh, the uh, areas that constitute Kogi West. But the most uh, disturbing is the now one that reverb is reverberating, flowing from the uh, hearing of the case uh, that eventually pronounced him the winner of uh, the. Uh, Kogi West senatorial elections between him and uh, Smart Adeyemi. That one proposes to be uh, dirty. If you have been watching events and listening to the both uh, distinguished senators, you will know that it's one that we need. We'll be giving you that uh, uh, the, 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 the version of as, as published by Sarah Reporters audio that purports that uh, Dino Melayi was talking with uh, Justice Ako Ekweme and uh, they were negotiating in dollars uh, we'll give you that uh, bit, uh, but Dino Melaye has clearly said it is uh, a voiceover, it is not him, whereas uh, 
uh, Senator Smart Adeyemi is calling on everybody, the, uh, the, the judiciary, generally the Attorney General of Federation, the EFCC, and everybody to set up a probe to look at the allegations that his case was that that was negotiated in dollars and not through the judicial process. Now we are getting both of them too to talk to us. Uh, we have I have spoken with them uh, off record, and they have permitted me to say what they want to say. But that would not that would not be enough. We want their voice on this program. Subsequently, we'll be calling on them uh, to uh, t talk to us on what they think. Our interest is to be sure that the judiciary is kept clean and that. Uh, everything is uh, put on the table for all Nigerians to see. Ohiri Agbon Suremi is my name. I have my colleagues in here, Dr. Amichi Anakwe. Amichi, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ohiri. Eight months after the House we are ready, the judges are asked to resume. Uh, you little wonder that the NJC took that decision because most of them were not charged. Those of them that the houses were uh, ready then, uh, probably the prosecution, the DSS and the state uh, didn't find much to take to court. And it is not unexpected because we uh, issued that observation here uh, on political platform that what the DSS could have done was to do a proper sting operation that would have given them the opportunity to gather the necessary... Nail, nail them on, on the spot, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, overbearing evidence that can indeed convict anybody. But it was a merit, and we said it then that to prove such criminal allegations in court are always... Uh, very difficult. But it's time for us to learn in future, uh, when you suspect a judge or a highly placed person is corrupt, you do a setup like we described then, arrange someone to offer the bribe, and do a, do a, a proper sting operation, and the matter will be put to rest, even in the, in the court of law. Uju AJ is also on the program this morning. Uju, the, 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 uh, the Southeast Development Commission uh, that was uh, thrown yeah. out here yeah, is uh, not a uh, a lot of people are still talking about it. A lot of people are still saying, look, uh, it is not. It was not even necessary in the first place if we have a, a, a structure a, that enables every section of the Nigeria to have a sense of belonging. Why some say, why don't allow it? You should just have allowed it. It doesn't really matter even for the nuisance value of having a commission that will take care of the Southeast. Okay, we are, there are two schools of thought, like you just uh, said. The first school is that it is not necessary but then talking about equity in the land where development you know whatever is being uh, initiated from the center gets to every section of the country then you may not have these kinds of agitation but the other school is look if you can do this for the northeast that it was ravaged by the uh, by insurgency boko haram then why not do it for people who were ravaged by the Biafran civil war? Because what the lawmakers were actually referring to on that day, that was last Thursday, was the agreement reached at the end of the war, commonly referred to as the three R's, uh, 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 re reconciliation, rehabilitation, reconstruction, that the promises made to the Southeast have not been kept up to date, and that there is not even one visible infrastructure to fulfill you know that agreement that was made by the Gowon administration and over the different administrations we've had in the country it still remains pending and so they are also agitating for it because what is good for the goose is good for the gander that was their argument on that day but i hear they are they are they are uh, rethinking the bill and that uh, those who uh, formulated it, even though it has it, it didn't skate through, yeah. that there's nothing that prevents them from repackaging it in whatever name and getting it. But there are some persons actually working on it to get it back to the floor. Well, I, I guess it, it would be a good one. Then they would have done a more thorough job and then maybe the Seek uh, more the, 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 the leadership yeah. too would be more amenable to whatever the contents uh, would be. Okay, I'm um, um, Bazwa Yusasson with us this morning. I'm um, about country's program. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the program. And on the issue of um, the recalling of um, the six um, judges, I think it's a, it's a welcome idea. Um, we have tested our judiciary once more, but I think it shouldn't just rest at that. Uh, we should just leave it at that point. The DSS who took out that operation need to also explain because right now there's a damage done to the credibility of these judges. And I don't think we should just rest the case like that. Okay, let's uh, take a break. When we come back, we'll be going straight to the mails. Busted. They present the popular radio program, Political Platform on the 
Ray Power FM Network. Ray Power FM Political Platform, now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. It's Ray Power Political Platform on AIT Abuja. Hello and welcome to the meal segment. I am Usai Tinyari. And I am Atenikan Akepu. You're welcome. We begin with a Mecca and Baz meal. He's writing on the Southeast Development Commission. He says, in my opinion, we don't need any Southeast Development Commission in order to develop or attract development. The Southeast needs much more than one commission, which is a smokescreen and ultimately an office or establishment for greedy politicians to eventually hijack or latch on to share money meant for development and further enrich themselves and impoverish the people. NDDC is a good example. What we need is local and foreign direct investment in massive infrastructure development and all inclusive, inclusive support for our teaming industrialists and amazingly creative manufacturers. And the Southeast will give Nigeria, Japan, China, China and Dubai all rolled into one. This is a natural fact that Nigeria and its leaders past and present know, but unfortunately, tribalism, hatred, jealousy, primordial sentiments would rather suffice. Cutting the Southeast is inevitable if Nigeria is really serious about self-sustenance in technology, manufacturing and otherwise. And Nosike Odiaka in Obanikoro writes on what restructuring means. He says, it is rather surprising hearing people ask what restructuring means. It is first and foremost about devolution of power to the constituent parts of the country. We have six geopolitical zones presently which should have a measure of autonomy to generate its own revenue, manage their resources and plan for its people without necessarily depending on the center. The instability and underdevelopment we witness today are caused by over-concentration of power at the center. Under a restructured Nigeria, the constituent parts will have the freedom, of, the freedom to formulate their policies, be they industrial, educational, agricultural, etc. Each zone can then develop at its own pace without in any way hindering others. The center still remains with less power and responsibilities, but with specific rules as done in the USA. Each zone should take control of the resources in their domain and pay taxes to the center. When this is done, the development of the nation will be fast-tracked. Our people in diaspora with huge material and intellectual resources will be encouraged to invest in their fatherland. The agitations about marginalization, the de desperation and to control power at the center, etc., will be significantly reduced. Private entrepreneurship will blossom. Jobs created in our country will gain unity. The present system is too monolithic and this and this has not worked. If we really want to build a nation where we can stand in brotherhood, where no one is oppressed and where God will bless us with peace and plenty, then restructuring is the answer. And this time is now. God bless Nigeria. Away from that, Richard Ubaka writing from Lagos says, whenever I see the children in the IDP camp, it makes me cry. And the leadership of this country is using golden hand gloves to treat those who diverted the funds meant for these people. They forget that these children will grow up and ask many questions on what happened to their towns, parents and educational backwardness. As we, the people who were born after the Civil War, are asking today and the country is feeling the heat now without any answer. The Northern leadership should think twice. These children smiling in the camp today are going to become angry in the future with the leadership of their region. God bless Nigeria. And on the World Environmental Day, Amechi Obochi in Kubu Abuja says, Today is marked as World Environmental Day throughout the whole world, Nigeria inclusive. Do Nigerians actually observe this with oil spill and gas flare in the whole of Niger Delta, erosion, degradation in the southeast, both humans and cattle drinking from the same ponds in the north, and the overflowing of sewage systems in Abuja? One can hardly drive through Asokoro, Maitama, and Wuse areas of Abuja without covering his or her nose because of the over-purified air in such places. Anyway, if Nigerians must key into this World Environmental Day, the needful must be done by all. The federal government, states, local governments, communities, and the individuals. Let us all follow the internal, international best practices in all we do, not only when the individual pockets are concerned. And that's it on the mail segment for today. Keep sending your mails to political platform at yahoo.com. Busted!
They present the popular radio program, Political Platform, on the Ray Power FM network. Ray Power FM Political Platform, now on television. Keep track of the country's polity and be part of the process as they discuss and put political developments in the country into perspective. It's Ray Power Political Platform on AIT Abuja. Thank you so much for uh, staying with us on the platform. Now, the uh, thank you very much, Amechi Obuchi, for taking us back to uh, the environment uh, issues. It's one of the issues we will be tackling in one of our episodes. You should get uh, uh, more attention on our environment. Most of the deaths, or many Over of the here, deaths... Over here, today is World uh, Day for Environment. That's what I want, that is the World Day for Environment. Now, the, the most of the deaths result, resulting from... Uh, uh, the, the our own environmental uh, misuse, uh, 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 some of the deaths can actually get to a very high uh, number if you're actually going to put a percentage at it. But unfortunately, um, very, very unfortunately, this is uh, the least area that we put our attention at. And uh, we just take things for granted. Go to the Buka around uh, where people eat, where I call Buka our uh, traditional... Uh, restaurants mama where put. mama put and go to these people go and see how they are prepared some of the beautiful things you see out there go to the locations where they are prepared this bottled water that we all uh, take some of the pure water in the search go and find out how they are prepared and if you take it at the higher level it is only in nigeria and maybe i don't know if, if, if there's any other country where uh, the gas is still being fled. I mean, if you go to the Niger Delta or parts of uh, the Niger Delta where oil is still fled continuously and it has been fled for the past 20, 30 years, you will imagine the environment. And we just and you, want to know, you want to know why part of the reason it only will cost um, an oil or a gas flaring company just to pay 10 naira as fine. Hmm. Is that bad? To, to flare maybe a cubic so, of... So, uh, so, so it's better uh, if the... If uh, it, because to clip it and uh, take care of it is more expensive yes, so you just burn it up now that i think there have been a lot of uh, moves in the national assembly two three four times the, the dates have been shifted uh we set a benchmark a timeline for the stoppage of uh, the flaring of gas and then we'll come back to it so it's not achievable la last week where um, there's this public hearing on um, the prohibition of, uh, po uh, of of gas flaring and different stakeholders uh you know came up came together to want to discuss some of the issues. So it's one particular area that is really quite disturbing to the President um, 8th National Assembly. But when you talk about fields, it's all, I, I don't know how many of us read what um, a veteran Nigerian journalist, Victor Ladukun, wrote about his recent experience when he visited Yes, yes. No, it's, it's that bad when yeah. people come into your country and the first and thing, the thing, first thing they see is just that there's just tension and the feet. And and feet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, look at uh, like the description. So I, I saw that in Zamfara State where you, I, I just moved away from uh, Gozo, the state capital. I traveled out of the state. I had not, I had not gone like uh, 10 minutes when I saw some persons. Uh, about crossing the road from a road path. So I asked the driver to stop and I walked in, took my camera and I walked along the road path. It took me about uh, 100 meters to get to a pool of water on the ground. You meet people drinking from that same water. You meet donkeys from this, uh, drinking and the cattle drinking from the same pool of water. Yes, and I was, I asked the then governor, what, what, why is it that it's not possible to in these communities, provide them with some basic what water. Uh, so, to, and when they drink this water, they 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 take on they take in a lot of things that shorten their lives. And that is why, if you ask those who are in the World Health Organization, they will tell you that the lifespan of the of the Nigeria, whether man or woman, is not up to fifty years. I mean, by putting all the factors, all the circumstances together, that you are not supposed to live more than 50 life years. Expectancy. Life expectancy. Somehow, we have moved from 46, 47 <laughs> over the past two decades to about 52. I don't know how that miracle <laughs> Of course. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's really a, a, a sad situation because, like, this place that you talked about in Zamfara, what does it take to uh, put a borehole there? It's not just Zamfara. It's all over. Even, I, in, the, I, I, even, I in, the, even in the Niger Delta, it's even worse. The way okay. there's even water. I mean, they don't even have the water to even drink. In, even in Edo State, I came across something like that. At a stage, there was no water. We had to go to a river, a river where you do the big job, 
and you know you also fetch water to drink and cook <laughs> we, we went the, through that and the, god so, being so, so merciful you know nothing happened to us we came something back, do happen you know, actually like, something do happen just that it doesn't happen like a gunfire and so most of them are not reported they are not reported no so now let, let's 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 quickly because of time let's quickly leave that now and go to the uh the kogi uh war let's just give you the recording before we go to do analysis listen to this very well and uh, what do you hear that's uh, uh now, between uh, we are we are we are told that the you, voice you is that of that. dino Medai and that of uh, justice ako Ikweme. let's see uh, what uh, you you hear hello Allegations in that uh, at audio uh, uh, tape, uh, according to the uh, publishers, Sarah reporters, is that the voice of the male there is uh, that of uh, Adino Melaye, where that of the female is uh, Justice uh, Akko Ikweme. The judge that was involved in the trial of uh, the petition between Dino Melaye and uh, uh, Smart Adeyemi. The bottom line and the summary of it is that if you whatever thing you want to do what you want to do please do it in usd you united states dollar that's a uh, and uh, the uh, smart adeyemi has gone out shouting on top of his voice that he has waited for like two years waiting and praying for any evidence he knew that something went wrong in the trial going by the evidence that was before the court but now that has come out under the federal government agencies security agencies uh they should look into it and investigate that Dino Melai has said it is a voiceover. It is not him. It is not. It is not. Uh, it is something that uh, people were purported to have assembled together, and that he has no dealings in dollars with uh, the judge that heard that case. Talking about justice, uh, but unfortunately, even if you have to reach the judge now, by nature, by the, the nature of their job, they wouldn't say anything. Uh, but we, it is one that uh, we need to uh, examine critically. Those who are responsible. And uh, so that the image of the judiciary wants not once again uh, be in the mound uh, with people having lowering uh, co confidence in going to the court. I think uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful these things are coming out. We expect the security agencies to quickly move in and uh, uh, do the needful. But if you want to provide the background, the crisis in the uh, political crisis in Kogi State, the Dino Melaya is pitted against the governor. And of course, we are hearing that some uh, recall process is going on where Dino and his group are saying the governor should resign over non-performance, over this, over double registration, what have you. So uh, when they fight like this, they, 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 they throw the up grass. a lot of mud. Yes, yeah. the grass that will suffer. But some, sometimes the gr grass uh, do yes. not suffer. Uh, the, the people <laughs> are, of course, the uh, beneficiary at the end of the day. If it is well guided, if the mm. fight is well regulated and uh, they are allowed to watch their dirty uh, linens in public. Mm. Well, uh, we will uh, be reaching out. With, we, promise, we have promised you that we want to get both parties to talk to us on the matter. They have all, all agreed. Dino Melai was supposed to actually talk to us this morning, but he told us he was in court. As we are speaking now, he's in court, so he cannot uh, uh, talk to us uh, on it. And uh, we are also trying to see uh, the former, the one who left the office before Dino Melai, talking about uh, Smart Adeyemi, who yesterday addressed the press. We already have his. Uh, uh, a, a, a video voice, we we'll extract the voice if he's not uh, willing to talk to us through uh, the phone. We we'll extract the voice and tell you what he feels about uh, the whole matter. Like uh, Amechi said, it's one that we want to uh, quickly uh, ask those who are, in order to preserve the integrity of the judiciary, 
to quickly take a look at it and clear all the fog, just as we have seen with these judges now. Justice Ademola, who is back to the court this morning because he has been cleared of all the allegations against him. Those who are appearing before him will be confident that they are appearing before a judge who has been cleared. We also do not want uh, Justice Akko Ekweme to face this kind of uh, uh, image uh, trial on, in the media without anybody taking a look at it to say if they are actually correct or they are not correct. Judicial officers cannot talk. They cannot address the press. And uh, it is one that uh, we need to... Uh, you want to say something? Yeah, so, some of the names of the judges are supposed yeah, to... Yeah, the, let me just quick te tell you that the judge, justices uh, or judges who are, who are coming in back to seat, Justice uh, uh, Iyang uh, uh, Okoro of the Supreme Court, uh, Uwani Abba Aji of the Court of Appeal, uh, Hadia Zira uh, Ngajiwa Federal High Court, Nijiwa. Uh, Nijiwa, okay. <laughs> Adini Yadimola of Federal High Court, Amusa uh, uh, Kuria of Federal High Court, as as well as uh, uh, Agbadu Fashim, uh, national of the National Industrial Court. Six of them are supposed to uh, are declared by the uh, NJC to go back to their work this morning. Mustafa Mohamed. Uh, I wouldn't know what happened to you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, national forces, anyway, it can happen to uh, anyone. Um, but uh, coming back to the, the, the discussion, actually, I, I would like to look at the Dino Melai and Smart Adeyemi issue. For a very long time in Nigeria... Yes, uh, fast, because we are, we are, our time is some, some, now. Some, some, some people in the legal or prof, uh, profession even lobby to get appointed to electoral cases because they, uh, they, 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 they taught in court... As in, it's a juicy job. It's a juicy and lucrative, and uh, a, a lot of young people were able to buy cars and houses in the past uh, 17, 18 years since uh, the return and of the actually, actually, some lawyers have actually been accused of uh, giving it, money it, to it, judges. Exactly. Yeah. But the, the biggest problem is that the government, the security agencies, the finance fraud regulators never looked back at these people. Suddenly, somebody who didn't have any car went to become uh, an, uh, you know, head of an education, uh, electoral tribunal. And suddenly, both jeeps and the houses here and there. It has happened several times. Why is it that if only when problems have eaten deep into our fabric, we we'll begin that to we... look for solutions? Exactly. All right, we have to wrap it up here. And on behalf of my colleagues, please let's uh, do it again tomorrow when we come back on the program. And remember to drop a line for us: political platform at yahoo.com. <laughs>